Hello everybody, this is Noe with Walk With Yah Ministry, asking today about life after death. And what can Genesis 2 verse 7 tell us? Because it may not be what you think it is. You know, I slightly touched upon this in the uh, Walk With Yah live stream number 17, where the topic was the human spirit's part in personal ministry, as well as Walk With Yah, the question and answer Q&A, uh, number 18, what is the curse of the law? But I didn't have the time to go deeper into this topic because that wasn't the primary focus. But I want to give this question more direct attention because it's really fascinating when you consider what the Bible is actually telling us, what it has to say about this particular topic. And so this is something I run into all the time, actually, uh, when doing deliverance ministry, that some people have a hard time understanding or believing. But let's start with what the Bible has to say, why don't we? So most people, when they consider, you know, what happens after a person dies, well, think of 2 Corinthians 5, verse 8. They may say, hey, to be absent from the body is to be present with the Lord, with the, to be with the Master. And the assumption is that a person goes immediately to heaven um, after they die, or as a friend of mine says, a uh, friend minister, he says, after they get promoted, which I kind of like, actually. It's, I like that version better. But we know that many times... Yeshua, Jesus, that he was misunderstood, you know, in the things that he was saying. And a lot of times also the Bible's taken out of context. But let's look at this. So in John 2 verse 19, um, Yeshua, in answering the religious leaders of the time, he tells them, hey, you know, if you destroy this body, this dwelling place, in three days, I shall raise it. And the Bible says they didn't understand he was talking about the temple of his body. And so, and even in John 3, we see Yeshua, he's talking to Nicodemus. And starting in John 3, verse 10, the Bible says, Yeshua answered Nicodemus and said to him, Are you the teacher of Israel and do not know this? Truly, truly, I say to you, we speak what we know and witness what we have seen. And you do not receive our witness. If you do not believe when I spoke to you about earthly matters, how are you going to believe when I speak to you about heavenly matters? Sometimes I believe that the Ruach, the Spirit, can't tell us things until we are ready to receive them. The Bible many times just gives us things in the simplest form that it can, um, that it needs to cover, but again, just very simply. The Bible says in John 14, verse 26, But the Helper, the set-apart Spirit, whom the Father shall send in my name, he shall teach you and remind you all of that I have said to you. So not only is the Holy Spirit just reminding us, but he's also giving us new revelation. He's teaching us new stuff. So before you call me a heretic, I'm just asking for you to, uh, to hear me out first. So let's go back to 2 Corinthians 5 verse 8. Uh, the context of the conversation actually starts in verse 1, and we're going to read to verse 8, kind of paraphrasing, skipping, you know, here and there, but 2 Corinthians 5, verse 1 states, For we know that if the tent of our earthly house is destroyed, we have a building from Elohim, from God, a house not made with hands, but everlasting in the heavens. For indeed, in this we groan, longing to put on our dwelling, which is made from heaven. Jumping to verse 4. For indeed, 
we who are in this tent, tabernacle, dwelling, groan, being burdened, not because we wish to put it off, but to put on the other, so that what is to die might be swallowed up by life. And then again, verse 8, we are of good courage, and we are well pleased, rather, to be absent from the body is to be present with the master. So the focus of the conversation is that we have two tabernacles, two tents, two dwelling places. We have a, a terrestrial earthly body and a celestial spiritual body. The focus really isn't on how soon we appear uh, in heaven after we get promoted. Now, we know from Luke, verse 16, chapter 16, verses 19 through 21, uh, we have the parable of Lazarus and the rich man that people had passed from this earthly realm went to some spiritual location. Now, after Yeshua's resurrection, the process changed. And we see this in 1 Peter 3, verse 19, where the Bible says that Yeshua, Jesus, preached to those that were in prison after he died. The Bible also says the set-apart ones that died were resurrected and appeared to many. And we see this in Matthew 27, verses 51 through 53. So just a few things to chew on before moving forward. But let's go back to the beginning. Well, more specifically, Genesis 2, verse 7. In this verse, Yah, God, changes things up as he does something different here than he did with the animals after he gave them life and created them. And I learned this from Sam Neller at the Explanation website as he has an Origin of Humankind series, which was really good. Anyways, he points out in Genesis 2, verse 7, and I'll read it to you. The Bible says, And Yahweh Elohim formed the man out of the dust from the ground, and he breathed into his, nostril, into his nostrils breath uh, of life's hyim. And the man became a living haya, being nefesh. So, in the Hebrew, haya means life, and it's singular. Haim means lives, and is plural. So when Yah breathed life into humans, we get a plurality of lives. Yeah, I know. That's a mouthful. So when we die from this earthly realm, We've only died the first death. Keep in mind the final judgment that happens in Revelation 20 verse 12 has not occurred yet. That determines a person's final destination. After that, those that have not accepted Yeshua, Jesus, as their personal Savior, will die the second death. Now, if you want to check me on this, you can find this in the Bible, where it says in Revelations 20, verse 6, Blessed and set apart is the one having part in the first resurrection. The second death possesses no authority over these, but they shall be priests of Elohim and of the Messiah, and shall reign with them a thousand years. In Revelations 20, verse 14, the Bible says, And death and Sheol, hell, were thrown into the lake of fire. This is is the second death. Finally, in Revelation 21, verse 8, the Bible says, As for the cowardly and the untrustworthy and the abominable, the murderers and those who whore and drug sorcerers and idolaters and all false, their part is in the lake which burns with fire and sulfur, which is the second death. So why do I bring this up? Because in deliverance ministry, we deal with a lot of type of different soul fragments. 
um, which are like spiritual DNA clones, uh, fragments of people, you know, whether they're dead or alive, that are living in the spirit realm. There could be even pieces of you, fragments, that are in the spirit realm. When ministering to a client, the spirit may show me someone that has died and is in the client's consciousness, whether it's a generational relative, which also, by the way, explains why some people believe in reincarnation, by the way, but I have another Q&A video on that one, if you want to hear my answer on that. Or it could be a soul tie of somebody that has passed, that was created when they were on Earth. Or it could be a soul invader, like a witch or warlock that knows how to get inside of you, into your consciousness. And so, um, lastly, it could be, uh, as an example, a wandering human spirit. Some people may call them alien human spirits or disembodied human spirits. And these are like uh, people that have passed before and they're kind of looking for a place to hide so they may inhabit your body. Oh, I hope you were sitting down for all this, by the way. But these different types of soul fragments still have the same memories, beliefs, attitudes, etc. than they did while they were living. But many times, since they're on the other side of the veil, they sometimes see things much differently and clearer. Like, for example, they might, they might now be able to see the demons. They might be like, I'm staying away from there. Uh, I need a body to hide in. I'm going to go hide in this one. And it's just a different world. Or uh, these different soul fragments that are in the spirit realm, they may think that they're still living in a place that resembles their home or some other place that they recognize. Um, as you can imagine, the, the circumstances vary wildly. When people die, some people go straight to heaven. But their spirits might get sent back uh, to pray and help work out whatever situations that Yeshua, Jesus, has them work on. Uh, I've encountered this numerous times. Some people will go straight to hell. And others are just hanging around in the spirit realm, but still inhabiting the earth. I've also dealt with humans that have passed that were scared to go to Yeshua, Jesus, because they didn't think that he would forgive them. And there's others that have stayed for other reasons. They feel like, hey, I need to take care of my kids or, you know, I need to take care of watch over my car. And they don't want to go to heaven, even though they have that right to. I'll have to say finally that these different soul fragments, many times, will manifest through the client. So the client may have thoughts, um, the thoughts of these soul fragments that are within them, but they may never question where do these thoughts come from. The soul fragment that is within them, for example, may still want to go out drinking, using the client's body. Now, as another example, if there were a witch while living on the earth, that witch could still be sending curses from the spirit realm to those in the earthly realm. Or, if that soul fragment has some type of uh, condition, physical condition, it could actually transfer to the host, to the client that is living physically. Seeing this happen, when that soul fragment leaves, the conditions that were attached to it, they go. And so, I can't say that's the reason for all your physical ailments and diseases, but it happens sometimes. Now, I have no clue really how soul fragments play into how Jesus will judge people, because that's, that's, that's way above my pay, pay grade. Now, I just know that Yeshua can take care of these problems as 
it's the Spirit's job to make us whole, as it states in John 17, verses 11 and 21 through 23. So if it's the Holy Spirit, the Ruach's job to make us whole, what would be the job of the demons, of the enemy? Would be to fragment us, so that way we don't know who we are. So, all I can suggest is that we have to consider there is a lot of revelation still in the Bible. And if you're trying to understand spiritual warfare with your carnal, earthly mind, I suggest that you read your Bible with the eyes of faith instead of your own understanding, per Proverbs 3, verse 5. Because we're going to be learning about his creation for the rest of eternity. So we might as well learn how to humble ourselves, and the sooner, the better. Anyways, I hope this helps clear up some confusion, or may cause more confusion for some of you. But uh, I get to see these realities all the time. Uh, when you do deliverance warfare, uh, deliverance ministry, uh, you begin to look at the Bible a little bit differently and start to understand it a little bit differently. And so, because it's dealing with a lot of spiritual topics as well. And we have to learn how to consider that. But I pray that this blesses you in some type of way. This is Noe at Walk With Yah. You can email me at noe at walkwithyah.com. And just remember, your miracle could be next.